Hey guys, and welcome back to the ASX Investor Channel and welcome to another ASX interview. Today, we're really excited to be unpacking the story of the PPK Group. They're a diversified investments company. They've had a significant evolution and continue to evolve. And really, they're playing right on the forefront of next generation technologies. So if you think about different types of sectors that are attracting a lot of investor interest from lithium sulfur batteries to ballistic armor, AI analytics software, and then really the core of their flagship offering now centers around BNNTs, boron nitrate nanotubes. It's an exciting offering. We'll be discussing it all. And we're really excited to be joined by the executive chairman, Robin Levison. He's got a long and storied history on a range of different ASX boards as a CEO as well. And so he's got a lot of wisdom and a lot that we'll be discussing today. Robin, it's been a fascinating past period for the PPK group. It's great to have you on the channel, mate. Thank you very much. So I'd love to just start with the story of the PPK group. I believe they actually had their roots in plastics manufacturing, have been listed for around about 30 years now on the ASX. Did you want to talk about the evolution and who PPK group is? I think the, you know, 25 years back is less relevant than it is now, but you, you're right. I mean, PPK group uh, floated, was floated by Morgan's originally, and uh, it was originally, as you say, a plastics manufacturer, which... 20 years ago, that was quite high level technology as well. Um, but over the time, uh, as more manufacturing got offshored, uh, the cheaper labor in China started to bite Australian manufacturing. Um, PPK Group sold its manufacturing businesses and effectively uh, kept some of the premises that they were in and then uh, moved into other areas, a little bit into mining services and a little bit into technology. Um, to, to bring things to the current, about four years ago, as a, as a board, PPK made a strategy decision to move much more um, strictly focused into technology and technology commercialization. And that was an area where three of the board members and the, particularly the founder and myself had had a fair bit of experience privately in funding uh, early stage and pre-IPO tech investments. So we started looking around for an opportunity to, um, to bring into the PPK listed group. And uh, we were very fortunate to be awarded the commercialization contract by Deakin University out of Geelong for a, a 20 year research project that they had had on their books called Boron Nitrate Nanotubes. Now that's kind of a mouthful. So we, we shortened that to be an NT, but Basically, what they are, those nanotubes, uh, they're, they're an incredible new um, type of technology where the actual underlying fabric is about 100 times stronger than steel. Uh, it'll conduct electricity. It'll repel radiation. Uh, it's heat proof. Uh, it, there's a whole range of, um, of benefits that come with the, the actual underlying nanotech. The biggest issue was nobody had been able to manufacture it at volume and at low heat. And that was the trick that Deacon managed to uh, achieve. So about four years ago, we took on that commercialization project, um, the risk of funding it. And um, over the, the next 18 months, we got to a stage where we were confident that we had the correct design, machinery, um, patents, IP, et cetera, to, to globalize that opportunity. And that's really what we've worked on since then. And um, we've now got half a dozen joint venture research projects with universities, uh, Deakin, University of Queensland. Uh, and I guess what has happened over the last four years is that we've really transformed PPK into a trusted partner for universities to, to hand their science to, if you like, and then we take the risk on that further commercialization um, outcome. And to date, we've been quite successful at it. Yeah, it's a fascinating evolution. I'd love to just uh, spend a bit of time on that. So at the moment now, you've got a range of uh, different investments. We'd love to just hear the overview about currently the portfolio and also that model for commercialization moving forward as well. Uh, as we've heard, you've had quite a successful IPO with a spin out of LIS Energy and just how that model will look for years to come. Sure. So, so I think um, I know your viewers have had a uh, an interview with Lee Fenier, the CEO of LIS, but maybe just to unpack that a bit from a PPK point of view, um, 
the LIS uh, sulfur battery research was a 10 year project at Deakin that they, they managed to create very high level of energy intensity batteries with lithium sulfur, but they could not get them to last long enough to be commercially viable. So effectively we were handed a, a struggling project in that area, which um, had almost run to its, um, to its end. However, when we introduced that science team to the BNNT research team, there was a clear opportunity to test whether BNNT would be the secret source to, to, to give longevity to the LIS battery. And that proved to be the case. So in an 18 month period, we were able to take the science that Deakin had packaged, the IP, we were able to put that into practical terms by introducing BNNT into the composition of the battery. We were able to, to show a successful test outcome and IPO that business at about 1.2 billion market cap. So we see that as vindicating the PPK university commercialization model. Um, we have another five projects underway that have the underlying improvement in, in the actual product is again be driven by the inclusion of BNNT. So for example, um, we have a project with a, another listed company called Amero, who is, who is a specialist 3D printing um, company. They are um, bringing BNNT into aluminium and titanium for products that they currently make for Boeing, the, the Boeing company out of the US. And um, we, we're just in the process of final testing of that, but we're hopeful that the introduction of small amounts of BNNT the cost of that versus the improvement to the tensile strength and the lightness of those underlying aluminium and titanium products will, will, will be very exciting for Boeing and other, other users. So that's one opportunity. Um, we have an opportunity where we're currently working again with um, ballistic bullet resistant glass, where the, the big issue there is that to get the, to get the, the ballistic resistance the glass has to be many or, or the, the substrate has to be very thick, which makes it very heavy. So it's an issue for um, cars, planes, helicopters, all of these things where um, you, if you can reduce the weight, you're going to be able to fly further, uh, et cetera. So we've got a number of projects. Um, another one is, is called 3D Dental, where we're currently experimenting with small amounts of BNNT in the substrates that you use for crowns and other teeth repair. You know, everyone hates getting a crown and then a year later they chew on a peanut and they find the, the crown's cracked. So we, when we did our original research on BNNT, we, we identified close to 80 different market opportunities for that product if we could manufacture it in a, in sufficient volume and make it cheap enough. And so we're, we're, we're constantly improving the manufacturing process. We're constantly bringing the price of the end product down and we see it as being more and more appealing to a, a wider range of industries. It really is fascinating. And I guess just to build on that as well, as you've mentioned, you do have the opportunity to potentially be the world's uh, leading volume manufacturer of it, of BNNTs. But just to conceptualize it for the viewers, what are so special about these boron nitrate nanotubes? Why are they such a unique technology and why are you so excited about them? Well, as I said before, there are a number of key uh, attributes to, to BNNT. The, the, the number one being they're, they're the, the, the strongest material on earth. So they're a hundred times stronger than steel. Um, but also they're super light. So if, if you imagine, um, what can, how can I make a description? If you, if you imagine the, the bullet resistant glass panels in a, in, in a say a, a, a bomb proof limousine are about two and a half inches wide uh, and they weigh maybe 70 kilos a window. We think but with the introduction of BNNT, we could halve the, the size and weight of those now that has an implication for uh, aircraft, uh, helicopters that are used in, in, in warfare where they have the panels underneath, but they can still see through. So there's a whole range 
disruptive opportunities there. Uh, NASA was trialing BNNT from a radiation protection and heat protection point of view. Um, and on our website, actually, the PPK website, there's a wonderful uh, TED talk by the head scientist of NASA talking about the potential uses of BNNT. Um, you know, I think one of the things she says, it would allow NASA to potentially send people to Mars because of the radiation shielding effect of BNNT. So there are, what I would encourage your listeners to do is, is, to, is to go to our website because there's a, there's a ton of information on there. And I'm not a scientist, by the way, so uh, you know it's it's not really my field of expertise to explain the the intricacies of BNNT. So it's been a transformative past twelve months, really. Of course, we've had the LIS Energy spin out, a couple of other new ventures, and the demerger of the mining business as well. Would love to just hear your thoughts about the, what the next twelve months will look like, and what growth drivers investors should be looking out for over that next period. Sure. So uh, I think there are there there are three key things that we are working hard on. We're working hard to f- gain industry acceptance for BNNT in the improvement of particular products, and, and that is why we're involved in producing a lithium sulfur battery. Why we're involved in the strategic alloy project, the dental project, and the ballistic glass project because we need to prove to different vertical parts of the industry that BNNT can make a material difference and the cost is not penal. Because up until our manufacturing process became successful, no one was able to buy high volume, high quality, low cost BNNT. So that's number one. Um, Number two is that we have a few other arrows in our quiver. So for example, we have a really interesting AI project that we're doing with UQ, which we believe will revolutionize traffic safety, productivity and management globally. And and that um, company AMAG, which we own about 25% of, they've got global trials going on with their AI product in Canada, the US, Australia and New Zealand. And we we see that as as a long gestation product but once, say, a Department of Transport or, or a DOT takes it up, it becomes very sticky and it's a SaaS product, which everyone loves a SaaS product. So we, we have that. And then, as you've mentioned, um, we've got PPK Mining, which um, is it doesn't really fit our profile now. So we're working hard to find a, um, a way to demerge that where our shareholders should win twice. There should be a good outcome in a standalone company with the mining services. But we also have a number of uh, international investors who would like to invest in PPK. But for example, the ethical funds can't do that while we still have mining internally. So so that's a a medium term goal of us to find the right home at the right valuation for PPKME because it's a very good business. It makes good money. Um, And so we see it as being a uh, a win-win for both PPK shareholders and and whatever that new entity ends up being. And you mentioned there's potentially 80 use cases that the company has identified in the early stages, but obviously as that continues to evolve, we'll likely see more use cases grow. We'd love to just hear your thoughts on as these businesses and the technologies mature, are investors going to be looking forward, forwards to potential further IPOs like they saw with LAS Energy or what is that route towards commercialization? Look, I, I think with any uh, product you have that you are um, commercialising to an end outcome, there are always two or three paths to, to monetization. One is obviously what we did with LIS, where we, we created an incredible greater than a billion dollar outcome from the science that, that Deacon vended into that entity for their shareholding. Um, the second part of that is... Um, often you develop something that's so pivotal to an industry that it becomes a trade sale outcome. And I think some of these verticals that we're working in, like the strategic alloy or the, um, the, 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 uh, the glass manufacturing outcome, they could easily be saleable to global manufacturers of that type of outcome. Uh, and then the third opportunity is for us just to keep them internally where we 
continue to fund it till they start to make really great money. And um, you know, they generate either further cash for us to reinvest in other opportunities and or yeah, PPK has always been a dividend payer. So um, yeah, we, we, we like to be a, I guess we see ourselves as a, as a Gary, if you want to call it that, growth with reasonable yield. It is, it's been a transformative period. The PPK story continues to evolve. I'd love just to hear some final reflections for those longer term shareholders who have followed ASX PPK, potentially some prospective investors who might be looking at the PPK story now. Did you have any reflections you wanted to share with them? Well, obviously I can't recommend the stock. Uh, but we, we we really feel we're in a really good position at the moment. And we think that with the number of projects that we have on hand at the moment, and many of them are in different stages of their commercialization lifestyle or, or, or life cycle, but um, we, we really feel that this is Australian technology developed in Australia. We want to keep it here in Australia and we want the wider PPK group shareholders, whether that be the LIS shareholders independently or shareholders that are in PPK and, and, and by our ownership of the 52% of LIS we have, they're going to benefit from any outcome from LIS. We, we actually see medium term that um, it was one of our institutional shareholders that coined this phrase. He said we had a lot of shots on goal and they don't all have to be successful, but I'm very confident that some will be. And I think that, yeah, you know, I'm looking forward to when we look back in five years' time to, to PPK being renowned for developing and keeping this technology in Australia, but globalizing the, the use of it. Flying the flag in a global marketplace, it's going to be really fascinating to see how the PPK story evolves. That's ASX PPK. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to hit the like button and share it out. We make daily videos, so make sure you've subscribed and turn your bell notifications on. Robin Levison, it was an absolute pleasure to catch up and looking forward to catching up again in the future as PPK story continues to grow. Thank you very much for your time.